as we've seen, uh, What's going on everybody? Brandon here from Gearist and today we're going to be taking a look at the Helios 2.0 from La Sportiva. Let's start this review out with two things. Number one, something I hate. Number two, something I love. Something I hate, I hate missing out on version one of gear, of a piece of gear and then looking at version two, having done a full testing and gone, oh man, this is awesome. I wonder what happened with version one. Something I love, I love a really lightweight running shoe, especially in the trail category. You might think this is just because lightweight shoes are awesome, but it's not. What I really like to see is whether they can balance any company, whether it's La Sportive or somebody else, how well they can balance that need for practical trail use with the ability to get a really truly lightweight shoe out of it because sometimes there are shoes that sacrifice weight and along with it track sacrifice a lot of that ability to actually go out and chew up some trails so with this shoe today we're taking a look at a shoe that meets both those criteria something i hate and something i love because number one i didn't see version one of this shoe right here and number two this is a really nice and lightweight trail shoe. So let's see how the La Sportiva Helios number two or 2.0 did. As always, we'll start with the outsole and the outsole in this guy is something of a paradox to me. Made from sticky friction, which is I assume pronounced friction, A-T rubber. Uh, what the contradiction is with this is that while you use this nice and sticky rubber, it's a contradiction with the lug depth. The lug design, which we can see here, you can see those ups and downs right there are as we look at the logo of La Sportiva, we can see that it is the V and the A from La Sportiva. These lugs, and this is where part of that contradiction lie, are only about two millimeters deep, so really not deep at all, and in some places, not even that much. Interestingly though, these lugs are placed atop the VA wave system, and if I hold this like this, you can see these kind of waves that go across the bottom of the shoe. We see these grooves that are in between that and all that. So what happens is these lugs sit atop these ridges, basically the crests of the wave, if you will, and at the same time, that adds some of that depth, kind of the perceived depth of the lug, as much as six millimeters in places. Continuing to look at the VA wave system, we do see where it looks like it would add quite a bit of flex flexibility to the shoe and in fact it does because this is a really flexy shoe front to back this thing moves around which we'd have to assume contributes to some of that really really lightweight now we'll get into that more in a second. First, let me comment on the Friction AT rubber that sits on the outsole of this guy. Now, I have done quite a bit of extensive testing, finding the bounds of what real stickiness is because everybody likes to say, we have the stickiest rubber, and this is truly one of those that lies in there. This is a shoe where I've taken this purposely on really flat rock that is up to about 45 degrees and without aid of a foothold or anything like that, I'm talking about pretty smooth rock, this stuck very, very well to that without much slipping or or any slipping at all really. And then we get into the lug depth. Now, as I mentioned a second ago, these are only about two millimeters deep at their deepest, but because they sit on top of these ridges from the VA wave system, it does add, again, a little more perceived depth to the lug. I mean, who, when was the last time you saw a true trail shoe that just had two millimeter deep lugs? It's really not a thing. But what we do see because of these waves, you add that depth, kind of the perceived lug depth that I mentioned a couple times now. However, because these waves are rounded off, really, they don't really dig in as you might see with a more cleated lug system. But this is not necessarily going to be the most aggressive trail shoe in the world, so it's kind of a trade-off there. Additionally, and this is something that I'll touch on a little more in the midsole section, because of these super deep flex grooves that we see right through the midsole there, this is something that you're kind of bringing some pokey bits, a little bit of the more underfoot debris closer to the foot, and with no rock plate in this shoe, note that, with no rock plate in this shoe, that might be something that might be of concern to you. La Sportiva does tout the Helios 2.0 as being okay for light road use and while generally speaking because of the lugs and I don't want to wear down that ultra sticky rubber and things like that, I hate to put trail shoes onto road. This actually did really well. I've got about three road miles on it. felt pretty good. It's nice and lightweight which again we'll touch on in a second. Uh, so if you choose to do something like that with this, Knock yourself out. Just be aware that sticky rubbers tend to be softer rubbers and road can chew those up a easier than trails can in most occasions. As we move into the midsole, you know, typically if you guys have watched a lot of our reviews in the past, I have melded reviews of the midsole, the outsole together in a shoe where 
they're so closely intertwined, especially from a functional standpoint as this is. However, I feel like these are just separate enough that they get their own little section. Made from morphodynamic injection molded EVA, this is the morphodynamic EVA that we see right here. This midsole boasts a minimalist-ish stack height of 19 millimeters in the heel and 15 millimeters in the forefoot for a net drop of four millimeters. So morphodynamic, what does that mean? Well, this is not the first time that we've seen this in a La Sportiva shoe. This has been around for a while. I think they had it initially in the Electron. It was an interesting concept. And what it is, is it basically says that this material, this midsole material is meant to shape itself around to morpho, to morph around things, to dynamically morph around rocks and things like that underfoot. Now, this is a part of where that outsole comes into play. We've got these lugs that are fairly traditional lugs, although very shallow, but they're coupled with this material right here that's meant to hit a rock and then shape around it. Now, while this seems like a good idea, and it is a good idea and actually does stick quite a bit, again, if you're on more technical, especially more rocky terrain where there's a lot of pokey things, you might be more aware of this than you would like to be. With midsole, let me just comment on the weight of this real quick. With my men's size 12 coming in at 8.5 ounces, a large part of that is certainly the cutaway material that is under here, which brings that weight down, but it's also part of what you sacrifice with it. And this is part of what I was mentioning at the outset of this review, whether a shoe can counterbalance its lightweightness with its ability to get on some more technical trails. This does an okay job and we will talk about this more in a second in the ride section, but for now let me say that this is a balance that's going to be a preferential thing. Whether you can deal with that type of shoe or that type of minimalism or that type of ground feel on the type of terrain that you run on most frequently. And now let's move into the upper of this guy, which again brings about a few paradoxes in my mind. Made for a combination of high drain and air mesh, this upper is generally pretty soft and supple. There are a little bit of kind of some stiffness around the places, but you might want stiffness in those places, so it's not such a big deal. The majority of the support system is made from bonded T few overlays, which we can see right here through the midfoot, though around the collar here, and then right up here on the toe cap, we've got microfiber overlays that are meant to beef it up a little bit in those places. And the upper also sports a speed lace system, which we can see right there, right over top of the laces. La Sportiva tends toward using a lot of different materials in their uppers, and this shoe is no exception. So while we've got, you know, the microfiber around the heel here, around the collar rather, and then around the toe, I find myself wondering, well, why didn't they just use the same TPU overlays that they left here? It may be a little bit more beefy in the microfiber overlays, but I really don't think it's that much more as to use those. Additionally, those are stitched on, which are going to add a little bit of weight. So I'm a little curious as to why that took place. And then also right over top of the vamp here, this being the vamp area over top of the toes, this is a bit of a thicker mesh right through here. And it leaves me wondering, especially when you see a lot of other shoes out there where this is a particularly lightweight area of mesh, this is a little heavier, so why was that choice made? It's not that it's uncomfortable or anything like that, but internally you're adding a few seams, so I'm just curious about it. As far as performance goes, I love the way that this upper fits and feels. Now it does take a little bit of dialing either before or during or both uh, your run, but once you get it nailed, it's really something that's impressive to me. As far as performance goes, I really love the soft upper of this shoe. The feel and the fit are really, really great. There's a flip side to that though, and that is because of the flexibility of the shoe, which I talked about a few minutes ago in the midsole outsole section of this review. Because of that, it requires a little more support, if you will, in the upper. That's because, especially as you get on technical terrain, which I don't necessarily think this is the right shoe for super technical terrain. As you get on off camber stuff, you're gonna feel that foot get maybe a little bit squirrely in there. Not so much that it can't be dialed in, but it is something worth noting. But if you like light and fast, this is certainly gonna be something that you're gonna find that in. Again, I really feel like much of this shoe is very preferential and subjective to the runner wearing it. Now, as we move into the fit of this, you just heard me mention a second ago that I really like the way this upper fits, and I stand by that. This is a really nice supple upper that really Really fits to the foot very, very well. The lack of a heel counter right here, which you can see is completely flexible, really gives it that very custom fit, which I feel like caters to people that have maybe a more narrow foot. Now, I'm not saying the fit of this is narrow. I'm saying that if you have a narrow foot and have a hard time with shoes being swimmy in the heel, then you might find that this works for you really well. Moving into the midfoot, I really love the way that this, the tongue gussets here, you can see that right there, actually gives it almost a booty-like construction. Something we see in, you know, the uh, Vazi Summit from New Balance or any of the Solomon shoes that have the endo fit. 
We get that really close to the foot feel and that hug around the foot that keeps debris out and also gets that really custom feel. The forefoot has a solid amount of room across the metatarsal heads, but up here in the toe, I would like to see a little bit more room. This is very Euro fit. I mean, uh, as I'm gonna talk about in a second, you have to size up in this guy, but generally speaking, again, that light and fast racer feel you're gonna get with this, although the pop of a racer isn't really there. Now, there are a couple of caveats with this upper being what it is, and so comfortable and so flexible, and the things that I mentioned a second ago, and that is that when you get on more off camber and more hairy trails, you want to have something that's got a little more, it's got your back a little more, so to speak, in the shoe. And, and this may need a little bit of dialing if you can even find that space at all for your particular foot. The second thing, and this is the way that La Sportiva has been for a while now, is that this runs small. Now, I generally wear a size 11. I have tried a size 11 and a half in La Sportiva shoes, but not until I go up a full size. This is for me, not necessarily going to be for you. I go up at least a full size before I start to feel like it's dialed. This 12 feels like an 11 and everything else. I'm very comfortable in this shoe and I really like the way that it fits once you get the sizing right. Now you may have noticed me talking a little bit about paradoxes throughout this review and the ride gives me a few more to jabber on about. This is a quick shoe. In fact, I wouldn't hesitate to call it a racer, although again, it doesn't have necessarily the pop that some racers have. Uh, but I wouldn't hesitate to call it that because of its lightweight and fast and agile feel. This is something that's gonna be able to rip up single track and groom stuff like nobody's business. However, many of us, myself included, don't always have access, well, we have access to, but we don't always find ourselves on those super groomed trails. I'm gonna find myself on trails that have a mix of things or some trails that are purely technical the entire time. And when I get on those trails where I want a shoe that I can just really roll over the technical and the rocky stuff with and not worry about what's underfoot, I did find myself being a little bit more careful with this shoe just because there's nothing underneath. It's very flexible again, and there's no rock plate. Although there is the Helios SR, which does have a rock plate to address this issue. The ironic part to that is that I love, because of the stickiness of this rubber, going after some more technical terrain, especially those flat rocks I mentioned early in this review, because it just sticks so well. Another contributing factor to the overall ride profile of this is that VA wave system that I mentioned here, this guy right here. Now this is, as I have said several times, now really additional to the flexibility of the shoe and if you're looking for that that is fantastic however there are many people that want to see a little bit more stiffness in a trail shoe and that's not here in this and it's fine I'm not saying a stiff shoe just a little more stiffness to add to kind of the ability to get up and over rocks and to come down and land in a more athletic position and things like that however if you are looking for a super flexible trail shoe this could very well be it since I have mentioned the road a couple times in this review I feel like it is necessary for me to mention the way this rides on road. You know, that hypersensitivity of the ground feel that we felt on trails with this, this does really, really well. And in some cases, you know, on the trails, it's a little bit too much, but on the road, it's a really welcome addition. Instead of not feeling much underfoot because you get so much protection in a trail shoe, this tends to do really well from a ground feel perspective. However, Personally, again, I feel like running on road with a sticky rubber trail shoe is just asking for those lugs to be chewed up. As we've seen, if there's an overriding theme to this shoe right here, it is paradox. However, overall, this is a very solid shoe that can handle trails that are not too technical or rocky. Other than that though, if you wanted me to tell you if this shoe is right for you, again, as I mentioned a couple times, I think it's really a preference thing. I'm not sure if everyone is going to be able to take this and just go on groom trails. If you want it for technical trails, again, check out the Heli SR, or maybe this is that shoe for you. Even on more rocky and ter technical terrain, you don't mind those rocks underfoot. This is definitely a shoe that requires some miles being put in it to see if it's your daily driver shoe or if it's just a shoe that you reserve for those groomers, those single track runs that you're going out to be fast and flat. At $125, it's pretty much right where I would expect it to be. Really not that expensive, believe it or not. This is a solid offering from a solid brand. And while I think there is certainly room for improvement and some of those improvements have been made and like, again, the Helios SR, uh, this is a really solid shoe and I definitely think it's worth looking at if that lightweight and agility appeals to you. All right, guys, before we get to our question of the day today, I want to please ask you again to share Gearist with your friends. Share all of our social, share this video, like and favorite this video, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. 
get the word out there. We've got some swag coming. We talked to a graphic designer this week. She's gonna be awesome. We've got some new stuff coming your way. We've got hats on sale right now. If you go to facebook.com slash gears, you can buy one of those technical truckers. Get out there, spread the word. It means a lot to us and we've got a lot of growth coming and we need your help. You guys have been here thus far. Let's really keep it going strong. And as always, if you're here in Colorado, let me know. Let's go for a run, hike, bike, whatever. We got it, we'll go and do it. It'll be a blast. And now my question of the day for you guys is how much is too much ground feel when you're on a trail or on the road where do you like that line to be do you like to be oblivious of what's going on under your feet or do you really like to be in touch almost to the point which might be painful for some people let us know down in the comments section below guys thank you again so much for your time today for watching us and for joining us and for subscribing we really appreciate it if you've got any questions don't hesitate to reach out to us on social media or email info at curious.com once again guys thank you so much and we'll see you next time Thank you.